Okay, so we've made it to week three. Uh, this is the weekly video recapping what happened last week, uh, previewing this week's material, and noting the important dates for the week, uh, stuff coming up. So last week we looked at phonetic transcription. Uh, we continued to get caught up on the sounds of Canadian English, and we talked about some different types of transcription. I shared a more in-depth video about how to go about transcribing speech phonetically, uh, and I also um, shared a sample transcription assignment to model the sort of detail you should be aiming for in your graded transcription assignments. Uh, there wasn't anything due last week, but I did encourage you all to try out the practice quizzes for the first two weeks of material. So this week, uh, we dive way deeper into the IPA. So first, uh, we cover the, the rest of the symbols in that first part of the IPA chart. That's the uh, it's labeled the, where is it, pulmonic, here we go, <laughs> La labeled the pulmonic consonants. Um, so these are the ones that are produced uh, with air being pushed out from the lungs. And we'll deal with some non-pulmonic consonants in week five, that's chapter six of the textbook. Uh, so we actually pick up uh, the epiglottal consonants as well, which are found in the other symbols section on the IPA chart, sort of down uh, here. Um, as we go through all these consonants, we fill out some sounds that have familiar properties combined in new ways, like bilabial fricatives and palatal nasal and others. Uh, but we also look at uh, one new manner of articulation, the trills, ra, uh, and some places of articulation that aren't used in English, like the retroflex, arda, uh, uvular, aqa, uh, pharyngeal, aha, and epiglottal, uh, which I can't really produce, uh, <coughs> something like that. Uh, we also get the full set of vowel qualities, so all of these vowels on the IPA chart. Um, and the textbook has a bunch of examples of all these new sounds, consonants and vowels, from across the world's languages, so that's kind of fun. And this section, this chapter in the, the uh, textbook, ends with a discussion of secondary articulations, labialization, palatalization, and so forth, uh, as, as well as their associated diacritics in the IPA. Uh, right, there's the whole section of, of diacritics down here, so we get some of those uh, in this section. Uh, so I'm afraid that as far as connecting symbols to articulatory descriptions, you're in for a lot of memorization. Uh, of course, since, since all the graded material in this course is, is open book, open book quizzes and assignments, uh, you could just keep your IPA chart handy. Uh, but still, you need to pay attention. There are five different n-like symbols. There are nine symbols that have e elements in their shape. Uh, and there are several other sets that also have the potential to confuse you if you haven't spent some time getting to know them and, and know what to watch out for. Even if you're looking stuff up in the open book context, you need to be careful because there's some pairs of symbols that really do uh, have the potential to, to knock you off track. Uh, so one resource that I'm, I'm work uh, it's a work in progress, and you'll see that and as you uh, go through it, is the IPA tips and tricks. Uh, and so that's where I, I come up with, I, I identify the sets that seem to be most confusing to students and um, give some tips for how you might be able to remember the differences and, and pay attention and all of that. Uh, so that's what you should be learning this week. Uh, in terms of things to watch for, uh, I've included uh, two practice quizzes for this week's module. One is the normal practice quiz with the types of questions you're likely to get on the graded quiz. Um, and the other is just IPA practice. It's a bunch of questions that test your ability to connect IPA symbols to articulatory descriptions. And this quiz, this practice quiz, randomly populates each time you attempt it. So you try it as often as you like and you should get a broader and broader cross-section of the IPA to, to get a good sense of, of how well you're, you're taking that on board. Uh, this module relates to the Sounds of the World 1 option for the first lab assignment. So now would be a good time to check out that uh, assignment description if you haven't already. Um, you should know, uh, keep in mind, there's another Sounds of the World assignment later in the term after we cover non-pulmonic consonants, phonation types, and suprasegmentals. So uh, if you do this Sounds of the World 1, 
assignment as, as your option for lab one, you can't pick the other one as your option when it comes up in lab three. Uh, so if you're interested in this sort of assignment, it might be worth looking at the alternatives for both of these to see which alternative you might be interested in, and that'll help you decide which sounds of the world assignment you want to do. Um, the first graded quiz is this Wednesday. Uh, that's uh, January 27th, and it covers material from the past two weeks, right? So that's the uh, the review module, so all the stuff, the review stuff from 101, that's chapter two, and the, the transcription stuff from chapter three. So try to make sure you've done both of the practice quizzes at least once each uh, before you do the graded quiz. Um, and remember, the quiz is open, is available. You can start it essentially the whole day of January 27th, midnight to midnight Alberta time. Uh, check some, you know, world time zone clock or whatever uh, to see what that translates to if your local time is different. Um, once you, you can start it any time in that. Once you start it, you have 60 minutes to complete it uh, or midnight, you know, the end of that 24-hour that block whichever comes first. So if you start half an hour before midnight, you're not going to have as much time to do the quiz. So do it, uh, you know, plan, plan appropriately. Um, I'd also like to remind you again to get a start on that first transcription assignment. Again, it isn't due until February 2nd, but you definitely, definitely have all the material now that you need to be able to complete it. It's Canadian English, so even this week's material, you don't have to go through the full IPA. You can stick to the, the symbols, uh, and sounds that we covered in the previous two weeks. Okay, that's it for this video. Uh, I hope to see you at Tuesday's tutorial. Uh, we're having a quick presentation from the Undergrad Linguistics Association at the start. They have some really helpful resources and things that they do that you might be interested in. So I'll see you later.